Okay, so this is at a few hours to dry now. So we'll just pull our tape off here and see what we're looking like. I'm not expecting it to look beautiful at this point, but we'll hopefully have a semi-decent surface to work with and then we can uh, kind of fiddle away and carve our way into looking semi-decent. Oh yeah, that, that's, that's nice and ugly and cracked and everything. And, well, let's see what we can do with this good stuff here to fill the cracks in. I kind of suspected that would happen, so we'll get a bunch of that on there. We'll work it into our cracks. Same on the inside here. We'll need a bunch of bunch more to fill those cracks. some more and then we'll get out the old fettling knife and some sandpaper and uh, start to clean this up a bit. More on there because this stuff has got a high glue content but it uh, does tend to shrink quite a bit so work it right in there. That'll probably take a couple more coats of that just to, to get that all filled in there. It's going to continue to draw in and uh, it'll crack some more as it uh, dries, I'm sure. We'll just keep uh, filling into the crack. There we go. Just sucks right in there. a bit and repeat this process a few times so Hey, 
now that this has had a chance to, to dry really good, the next step to do is just take some sandpaper and just need to work on smoothing the, this off here. Uh, and just uh, working in some of the detail again. Um, and just very, very, very lightly just uh, sand the inside here and see what I can do here to get some of this smooth. Now, don't need a whole lot of pressure with this, just, just, it's very soft. There's just dry dirt, so basically all clay is, so just work very, very carefully with it. You have to do your work all over again if you're not careful. And in all honesty, for the cost of this thing, I think it's about eight bucks. It's an awful lot of work to repair it, but it's a uh, something to do in the afternoon and saves me eight bucks. <laughs> um, and it's a good skill to have to know how to know how to fix these things. Like you're not normally going to be fixing something that's got got a major boo-boo like like what this one had. Um, normally you'd uh, save this for a piece of greenware or uh, or uh, bisqueware or something that costs you a lot of money. You're not normally going to do that, do it on an $8 item, but uh, you know, this, this skills are are the same anyways. Just uh, take your fettling knife and work down all these corners here or It's really tough to actually get in there and get the uh, get the spot where I, I was working on it, but it's just a matter of angle. But that's where different uh, different little tools come in handy. This little scraper here. I will just get that in there. I've got some detail here I have to kind of draw in here. I'm, I just have to, one, once I get this sort of smoothed out here, I'm going to draw a couple of eyelets in here, just uh, like what I have up here. And I'm just going to scratch them in lightly. So, but right now I'm just they're working on smoothing this out here. So now you can as well with the sandpaper do a little bit of the fettling knife work. I'm just taking this seam off at the back of the boot here. And it does just work it in a circular motion here. It does much the same work as, as the fettling knife would. It's not not nearly as precise though, but uh, it does get rid of the uh, of the seam there as well. So. Yeah, that's working out not too bad there. That seam is almost invisible now. Just I'll switch the smoother side. I've actually got two grits on here, a, a coarse side and a medium side. So just switch to the medium side here now to do the final sanding a little more in this area here. I'll just hide that seam completely.
Yeah, that's, that's almost invisible. A little, bit, a little bit of a ridge here still. Nice thing about these sponges, you can just squeeze them and anything that's stuck in the grit comes out. So and you just uh, brush that off. And if you brush it off rather than blow it off, it could, you don't make as much dust that way. But uh, you can see I've got some fine, uh, fine uh, uh, lines in here. I've still got to work on getting that out. So we're just going to switch probably to an even finer uh, sandpaper after I get done done here but I've got the main ridge out here that's almost invisible and I'm, I'm never going to match the, uh, the smoothness that I've got here on, on the rest of it so but uh, I've got the same problem here wherever it's cracked here on the outside I'm going to have a always going to have a slightly slightly uh, rougher rougher finish than, than the rest of the boots. So what I may actually do after, after I'm done here is just actually go through and uh, just sand the entire boot and that'll give it all the same texture. So that's one, one solution to the problem. Uh, the other thing I could do is just uh, take my finger, dampen it, and just work it over the uh, the seams here and uh, just smooth it out just provided I don't go too 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 far with uh, with the sanding marks <laughs> carving in a little bit of detail. Um, when I did the patching, uh, a couple of the eyelets were obviously plugged over. And so basically what I'm doing, I'm just carving my eyelets uh, back in here. Just using my little blunt-edged pick to Put in a rough eyelet here, and then here, um, this here is just the uh, shoelace hanging down here out, out of this eyelet here. So basically, just Carve that up there. Knock that down because that's a little too high. And just just work on it here until it looks uh, semi decent, I guess. We'll probably build that up a bit with the. Uh, with the mold repair glue and that's got to be cut down a bit here. We've got a bit of a ridge here so we don't want that. And when you're working on these pieces here that are high make sure you put some back pressure on them here so that they don't crack again on you. You don't want to be doing all this work only to have everything shatter once again for you so so give it some support I'm just gonna build this up just a little tiny bit here we'll get some mold make there we oops <laughs> that certainly came out 
So we'll build that up. Along there. That'll shrink down as that dries. I also want to a little bit of a low spot right here. want to fill that in as well. So you have to be kind of patient with this because it does actually, it isn't actually a lot of work. Um, in some ways it's uh, often easier just to uh, take this whole thing and dip it in water and let it uh, go back to being uh, let it go back to being be, being uh, mud and simply re uh, recast it uh, since I don't have the mold to do that we will be doing it this way while you're uh, fixing up the uh, boo-boos from earlier, you might as well do your fettling as well. Um, you can use a fettling knife. I'm just using a, uh, a pick here to gently scrape away the, uh, the marks from the uh, mold here. Um, these seams here are uh, made. It's a, it's a multi-piece mold and when you take the item out of the mold there's these seams that have to be cleaned up and I'm just using a uh, dental pick with a short blunt end on it here and just rubbing it back and forth real quick here just going across the high points of the uh, of the mark here where, where the uh, two pieces of the mold joined. What happens is it's not a completely tight seal so it does uh, actually uh, have a little bit of the uh, of the mud go in between. So here I've got a rivet here that I can put some detail in as well. Just kind of round out that hole a bit there, so and drag that around there, so you can see that rivet there. Just want to scrape it down to the level of both sides here. Just be careful you don't overdo it, or you'll be, end up with a uh, dip instead of a ridge. Constantly brush that off. What I'm doing here isn't exactly traditional. Uh, isn't exactly traditional uh, pottery working techniques, but it does the job. These are just. Uh, drywall uh, sponges that I have here for sanding into corners and stuff like that. Once I uh, get this all cleaned up I'm going to go over it again with a, uh, a sponge, a damp sponge and just, just sort of knock all these little uh, tiny scratches out. Just carry on down the ridge here, just uh, gently scratching it off as we go. Paintbrush is handy just to keep your area clean.
Well, and you know, once we get done here, you'll never know that that uh, line was there from the mold. cleaning as you go along here just to keep everything everything so you can see it. That does tend to make a lot of uh, a lot of dirt this process. This is well what I've got in my hands here is, is literally dried mud so that's uh, at the greenware stage that's what you essentially are holding, so it's just dried mud, so I don't think that looks too too bad. Uh, let's see that line just a little bit. That's the nice thing about having these overhead lights here in this, this uh, room that I recently built. So nice to. Well, I've got this line coming in here. I'm just going to work this so that it runs into there. And then I can leave just a tiny bit of that ridge and just kind of fade it out. And nobody will know it's not supposed to be there. And just got a little bit of a high spot here. There we go. We'll just take the rough one. Cut that down just a bit. Oh, you can hardly see that now. Anyway, so this is what it's looking like so far. I've got all the uh, all the uh, molding marks uh, all uh, fettled off the uh, boot here. Uh, I've cleaned up uh, the seam in here and over here I've got it looking not... there. And over here I've got it looking not too bad on the inside here. Still got a little bit of work to do on this edge and on the outside. Um, I, I a little bit of work to do on the outside here yet. Uh, I've uh, worked in this detail on, on, on these eyelet holes here. I just got to smooth this out a little bit more here, a little bit more to work, and then I've got to do the inside uh, up here, and of course the and of course the outside over here. So anyways, once you've uh, kind of uh, worked worked it so that you you've sanded it uh, most most of the uh, rough areas and uh, kind of scratched in a few of the details you just want to take your finger now and uh, just 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 wet it a little bit of water and just just rub everything smooth again uh, and just it's kind of hides cracks and it, it uh, yeah, hides the scratch marks of the sandpaper and stuff like that so you'll find that uh, this actually uh, you do uh, make, make a lot of little rough marks so with the uh, sandpaper. So you just want to smooth things off so it, it uh, kind of blends into the rest of the uh, of, of the piece. And you want it take the sharp edges off the detail that, uh, that, that you scratched in and stuff like that. So and just take your time, be patient with it. Um, one thing you have to bear in mind is that, is that uh, 
however this looks when you get done that's going to be your finished project so with, with any cleanup job for for any kind of uh, pottery work uh, or or any kind of even modeling work for cement or anything it, it's you're going to want to do as good of a job as you can because especially if you're reproducing something in a mold like I mean, your, your model making uh, one thing to always remember is that uh, any mistake that you make is going to be in every single copy that you ever make of that item so you're going to want to take the time and get that right so Just softens things up a bit. Just do be careful at this point that you don't put pressure on the wrong point and break it all over again. Uh, I've had that happen before too. So. I can just, you can just you do this to remove your fiddling marks as well. I've got some fiddling marks on the heel here that I want to take care of so we'll just get rid of that and blend that all in and just smooth everything over nicely so you don't see the mark this dry really good and once it's completely dry then, then you can disc fire it and do your finishing from there. That's so. basically how it gets done. Um, the next step after after this once I get this all done is going to be to take it back to uh, where I bought it from and get them to fire it for me into a bisque form and uh, hopefully it doesn't uh, break in the kiln. Um, I, I, I will uh, know if, if, if I got any air pockets uh, when, when I was doing the uh, repair work in here because um, thing you, you, you have to have your uh, have, have your uh, clay solid because uh, if you get any air pockets inside what happens is the air will expand inside the pocket and it'll actually blow your piece apart so um, so hopefully I didn't get any air pockets in here. I, I was I was pretty careful when when putting in the uh, the the patches in place uh, that I, I did a good good job in in, in keeping it nice and uh, nice and solid. So uh, hopefully we should uh, be able to fire this okay. So anyways, have a good day.